Um, all right, well, here we are. The sound's good, everything's good. I've got lots of cameras on me, which is what I like. <clears throat> is this in frame? No. Uh, yes. I don't need this thing anyway. All right. Lots well, of cameras. Huh? Cameras on you and in front of you. The cameras on me, see, that, that would be even better if they were all pointed at me. But Just like a, yeah. Yeah, no, that's okay. This is exactly, this is exactly where we want to be. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to the Barnack Hour. Um, this is my friend Keith Spiral. Go. Okay. This is my friend Keith Spiral. I'm Dan Tamarkin. Uh, we're both uh, into photography and into Leicas, and we thought that we would bring you a few ideas and a little conversation about the world of Leica and what we are shooting these days and, and what we're reading these days. Uh, and so we thought you might like to see what we have going on. It's a lot of Leica, for one, that's for sure. But we want this uh, uh, photography show, The Barnack Hour, to be about more than just Leica. Uh, although it is our favorite brand, um, we like all kinds of cameras. And so we want this show to be about everything photographic. So please, give us an idea of what you want to hear, what you're interested in, and we'll address that topic. My name is Dan Tamarkin, and I own and operate Tamarkin Camera in downtown Chicago and Tamarkin Auctions. We specialize in Leica cameras, and uh, we thought that we would invite you in here to our gallery and showroom and introduce you to one of our good friends, Keith Spiro, who is a photographer, a Leica aficionado like myself. Um, Keith runs, uh, along with his wife, Amy Gardner, runs Apochromatic and also Complete Cuba. Um, Complete Cuba is a Cuba travel organization that does terrific journeys uh, to Cuba off the beaten path and uh, personalized, fantastic journeys I can speak from experience because I've been on a number of them myself. Their company, Apochromatic, is a career counseling and guidance corpor uh, corporation. That's not right. A corporation is the part that's not right, really. It's My name is Oscar Barnack. No. <laughs> Son of a bitch. No, I'm Oscar Barnack. Okay, fine. I'll be... You know, we do career coaching and consulting. Career that's coaching what we do. We, and consulting. We just use those two words a lot. Right, and so it was. It, but, it, it was, you know, it is technically incorporated, so I guess you could say is. corporation. All right, cool. All right, I didn't want to. I wanted. I didn't want to miss the mark Oscar. on that, Oscar. So Oscar Barnack, what's the Barnack hour? Well, Barnack, sixty minutes. Sixty minutes. This being, photographic therapy is likely to be less than an hour, maybe fifty minutes. We'll probably get reminded when our time is up. Um, Barnack, Barnack, Oscar Barnack was a gentleman who lived in the late 1800s through the uh, early uh, 1900s, and he developed the Leica camera. How tall was he, Dan? That's a good question. Five nine. Five nine. I don't know. I don't know, but I could tell you that he used to carry a giant tripod and a big wet plate camera, and he had asthma and a few other health conditions, and so he said, I don't want to be carrying all this gear. I want to make a tiny camera that uses the currently manufactured cinematic film, which was uh, 36 by 24 millimeters, what we know as a full frame or, or a 35 millimeter format camera. And he took that 30, existing- 36 by 24. Did I say oh. it wrong? No, but you called it 35 millimeter then. So that's- Oh, 35 three, millimeter. Three different numbers. It's so confusing. I just try to clarify for everyone. That's why he's here. Yeah. So the 35 millimeter format uses 36 by 24 millimeter dimension film. Do I have that right? Okay. So Barnack said, F this heavy equipment. I'm tired of carrying around a big tripod. I want a Kleina film camera. I want a small film camera that I can use to make, uh, from a small negative, make a big print. And so Barnack took 35 millimeter film and he made in 1914 uh, the Leica, um, first like a camera. And then World War I came around and all of the production for everything except the war effort was stunted. And so the camera wasn't made until 1925 or 26 and was introduced at a German fair uh, and took off. And so 1926 was when the cameras began to be produced. And this is an example of one that was made in the early 30s. And the ones that look like this are the original Barnack cameras. And they have little collapsible lenses and they were made to fit into your vest pocket, and you could take uh, 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 excellent picture with these little lenses, uh, 50 millimeter f3.5, you have your aperture here, you have your focus 
here and a little viewfinder. You wind the film, you click the camera. Real cool camera, but the Barnack Hour is not about the tech. Although we do kind of a hundred years, in that. Though, 100 from 1827, 100 years later, we just made from wet plate to. That's right, 100 years. 100 years. Yeah. So when you look at how long photography, 35 millimeter, and photography in general has been around, discounting the origins of photography, like the camera obscura, right? Like, because that's been around for centuries. But the silver halide, silver bromide, and different photographic processes of what we now know today of as film photography um, started in 1827. So is Who it is called the, uh, the, the Barnack Hour because it took 100 years to go from big wet plate to this, and yeah. then 100 years later, we're still here, so there, he like got it right. He kind of got it right. Okay. Yeah, he kind of got it right. And you know, these cameras were the first mass produced 35 millimeter cameras. So you have this kind of thing like uh, that other people, Barnack was not the only person that was using 35 millimeter cinema, cinema, ta, cinema, cinema graphic. Who were the other people, Dan? Let me, let me try that again. Barnack wasn't the only guy, quiet you, Barnack wasn't the only guy who was using 35 millimeter cinematic film to, to make a small package camera. Um, there, was, there were people in Italy, there were people in, in There were England. people all over the there world. There were people all over the world. So yeah. it wasn't only his idea, because but it was because he was an engineer at this microscope company, Lights, um, L-E-I-T-Z was the original name of the company. Um, he had access to the optics and the mechanics that made up his little camera. And so he was really, he and Leica were really the folks that made it the, the, uh, the final product that you see and marketable, whereas everybody else had, was just kind of tinkering around. But Barnack and Lights were able to actually bring it to market. So yeah, that's right. And so they really got it right. I think photography is one of these things that um, it's almost part of the human condition, people's interest in the photographic record. I think that people who are photographers obviously are really into it, but all of us take photographs. We use our phones, some of us use cameras. There have been a long line of different types of cameras, video cameras, camcorders, remember those, and the VCRs and all that that went with them. People really have a, a, an interest that's almost innate to the human condition, I believe, in photography. It doesn't lead everybody to go out and buy a Leica camera, which is typically kind of cost prohibitive, um, but it's the right tool for the right job for a lot of people, and which is why folks really like Leica. Uh, but the point is, people love photography, and you don't need to have a camera to really enjoy photography. Now, we all have them on our phones, and more, more and more people are taking photographs, and I think it's really a fantastic thing. People say to me, they're like, oh, you sell Leicas, you must hate iPhones. Really, I don't, because the more people that take pictures, the more people are eventually gonna say, hey, I think this iPhone stinks uh, for, photographs, I think I want a real camera. I want to learn how to use a camera. And with the Leica camera, you have just a few dials and there's no buttons, even on the digitals. Like there's very, very few buttons and there's no BS. It's a real kind of straightforward thing, um, which is one of the reasons that I think Keith and I both fell in love with this brand. Uh, also, I'm in history too. It's interesting because you just explained the history of, of the Leica camera and you know, this was, a, this was a moment where many, many, many more people could take pictures, right? Way more people. Oh, yeah, all of a and sudden, then, yeah. And then you think about the last time period when Polaroid came out, more people taking pictures instantly seeing them. And then you think about digital photography, and then yeah. you think about the iPhone. And, and the, yeah. And the thing is, is there's always a different format. There's always a way people are taking pictures, but over time, the more people that get in the top of that funnel and get involved in it, the more people are pushed to do really great photography. Yeah, boy, that's a good point. That's I what it's about, right? It. It's about yeah. photography, not necessarily the gear. Yeah, absolutely. That's part, I mean, that's really part of why we're sitting down and talking. I mean, usually... You thought I was only good for one-liner. Right. <laughs> There's, there's, that was there's like, like four or five deeply profound thoughts in my head. That was like four full sentences of Thank you. profound thoughts. So that, I mean, that's really why we're here today is because we thought, we figured it would be nice to share some of the conversations that Keith and I usually have. So, uh, <laughs> wow. so but we're going to keep it clean. Yeah. Um, and Keith, I know it's disappointing, isn't it? 
Cuba. Keith and I talk a lot about different stuff. I mean, I've traveled with Complete Cuba. Um, we've traveled a lot together. We take pictures together. Um, we meet at, during COVID time. We would meet in the parking lot next to Keith. It's okay that I'm telling this, right? <laughs> yeah. It's that we would fine. meet in the parking lot. I mean, I hope you put a little bit more detail on it than just we met in a parking lot. Right, yeah. We, you no, know, I am. So we would meet in a parking lot adjacent to Keith's building, which is not yeah. far from here. And uh, it's very West Side Story. And so we would meet in the parking lot and uh, we would have a little drink, like a little flask or a bottle of beer or whatever, and smoke cigars and basically just loiter in the parking lot. So far, the authorities haven't picked up on this. And we would just shoot the sh and we could be, you know, six or eight feet apart and we could take our masks off for a little bit and actually enjoy each other's company. And so through some of these meetings throughout the last year, we started to, you know, veer into all kinds of different stuff, not just photography, not just Leica, not just travel. And so I think it's, and there were other people in the parking lot. It wasn't just us. I oh, mean, yeah. several times there was multiple groups. Oh, yeah. We yeah. were louder than them. But. Almost always. And probably more blue, too. Yeah. Um, definitely smellier. Um, and so I remember the first time we met, there, was, there were three gals and their dogs on, in the middle of the parking lot. I mean, who's driving in the middle of COVID, right? So, uh, or who's parking? And so they're sitting in the middle of the parking lot on, like, a quilt with a picnic and their dogs and they're just having a terrific time. And Keith and I had a terrific yeah, time too. We would smoke a cigar and gals and dogs. Gals and dogs, that's right. That's gonna be our next, our next musical. So stay tuned for that. Um, but that's, I mean, this is exactly the reason that we wanted, I wanted to sit down and have this talk with you and, uh, and with you and with everybody because I think it's fun to talk about photography. And when he says you, he means specifically you, so. Yeah. Joe, Joe's our DP, so I'm, I'm talking to Joe. I wasn't talking to Joe. No, he was talking to Johan. Johan's our assistant DP. I don't even know what your guys' titles are, but what does it matter? You like photography, right? So, like, how much stuff do you guys film that's Fuck. just like... And the... I was just talking to the camera. It was kind of a joke. Oh, well, I want to talk to them, too. He's Wait too a minute. serious right now. <laughs> that's my problem, is I'm too Grab serious. Grab yourself a Noctilux and relax. There we go. We really do like the gear. We really are gearheads. <laughs> but we're going to try not to geek out on that stuff. But I can't, like, I, look, when people come into the showroom, I, don't, I won't let them take my picture unless I have a camera in my hands because I'm that much of a gearhead. But seriously, so you guys film a lot of stuff, right? You film a lot of stuff. You edit a lot of stuff. I, I'm not going to pin you down a percentage, but you probably see some pretty boring shit, right? So that's why, you know, but this probably... I mean, I don't know how much of crossover there is with you fellas, but I would imagine that there's a certain amount of crossover. I mean, there's lenses on your cameras that you're using. These guys are using uh, uh, Leica and Lumix and, and Canon, and I don't know what kind of lens that is, but I know I look good on it, so and it's fine. It, Fuji's not a four-letter word. So uh, I, we wanna, I wanna talk to everybody. So, I, I mean, I'm interested in 35 millimeter. Keith just got a plowable 667, 670. You have it? Bust it out, I wanna see this camera. I want the, one of these cameras so badly. Keith Moving just that got this chair camera. probably caused such a noise on this that everyone's I know, deaf now. I know, we'll edit, we're gonna edit it out there because they're gonna be beeping me for all the F-bombs I drop. Dude. See, there you I'm go. Totally a gearhead. Yeah. But like, do you guys talk, you guys film stuff that has no connection with photography or Canon or, or Nikon or Fuji or, or lenses or anything. But that's one of the interesting things. Like even an iPhone, it has a lens. I mean, people can understand that kind of thing. And so we're interested here in not just like a, not just photography, but everything. Like, yeah, let me show, so, yeah. show that thing off, dude. You know, this is uh, some 1980s. So this was designed in Germany, built in Japan. It's rad. That's a Nikkor lens. You got the wide too. Yeah, it's the wide. It's a Nikon Nikkor lens, and they made two of these cameras. And so this is a medium format camera. You see yep. the the yeah. <laughs> we're gonna do we're gonna do battle bots with the Leicas later too. Um, you can see the difference. So this takes 35 millimeter film, and this Mine's takes bigger. 120. You're, I knew you were gonna say that. Mine's, well, we'll just keep going. See. Uh, it, you can see the difference. I've been lusting after one of these cameras for the longest time. So they made a 55, which is what, like a 35 millimeter lens on yeah. medium format. Because the negative's like this big. And then they made a an 65, 80. which is an 80. Or, or an, an 80, 80, which is, which is like 100 yeah. or whatever it is. I don't know. <laughs> it shows you what, it shows you what a lot I know. of different numbers. So I want to say right now. Different lenses. I've already, yeah. Don't put, wait, don't put that don't away. Don't put it away yet. All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> I want one of these cameras so badly. Is it loaded? It, it is pow, loaded. Pow. This thing is so cool. 
Man, so we're not all 35 millimeter. Oh, I'm so envious, man. Congratulations. 35 nice millimeter, you know, the 35 millimeter frame is actually 36 by 24. That's what I hear. Yeah. You know, I was never so good at math. Well, you know. So, and that actually is the good segue into the disclaimer. You could fill an ocean with what I don't know about photography. The bigger one. The so please feel Pacific? free. Pacific. Pacific. Okay. It's the specific. Feel free to drop comments. We want to know what you think. If you, and if I say something that's wrong, it's because I'm blathering, not because, well, maybe I'm just wrong. Tell me, because we don't know everything. We want to learn, and that's part of this conversation. Right now, it's being filmed, it's not live, so we can't hear you scream at us, but we can hear you scream in the comments. So leave, leave You're welcome, leave everyone, comments. the trolls, the, oh, yeah. all of them. Oh, I love deleting comments that are You're bullshit. <laughs> We're an equal opportunity uh, criticism Deleter. and acceptor. Right, Deleter. yeah, totally. <laughs> no, dude, feel free, really. We don't, we don't know everything. I know a lot about life. They're finally <laughs> laughing, so yeah, we're right. probably, this is the first <laughs> funny thing we've said the whole day. Right. So great. This is where we should start. Okay, is so. Is something meant to be funny? We're rolling. Action. <laughs> we are rolling, right? Okay, down in front. <laughs> so we don't know Take everything. We know a lot. Like I'm, I'm an expert in Leica. I know a lot about history of Leica. I'm a historian also. And so I really enjoy the intersection of the creativity of photography, the history of the Leica and the technology, even though I really don't know an awful lot about it. So do feel free to correct us. And we are all about sharing information and learning. So uh, we're glad that you're here with us. And with that, I want to play with Keith's camera. That, that comment was so easily picked on that I, I just didn't because you, s you sounded so genuine about it. You know, the intersection of I know, whatever you, the hell you said. Do you think really they're going to buy it? I don't know, but uh, they're still listening. So We'll without, find out in the yeah. comments. Yeah. So, you know, hey, here's, here's the thing. Let's, I'll, I'll tell you something serious about this. Yeah. So, Barnack was all about making this portable and yeah. quick. Right? Yeah, 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 like, totally. Let's take pictures. Totally. Portability was crucial. But what we did is, you know, through that whole timeline, the Polaroid and the digital and all this iPhone and everything else, we got so fast that we never slowed down. Huh. And Leica, I think, is something that slowed me down about six, seven years ago when I first started shooting with it. So you're thinking huh. about the things that create the camera, the, the yeah. image, right? The, the aperture, the shutter speed, yeah. the sensitivity of the film or the or the sensor or the iso yeah and and the the thing is here that this slowed me down even more yeah i bet right? so because it's it's just not natural yeah uh, yeah the focus being up on the top i know and, i was looking for the focus this is our aperture this is our shutter speed and that's the focus. yeah and then and then the iso is way down there on the bottom oh oh right yeah that's so cool. anyway it slows you down even more and i think that yeah that process of slowing down is such a benefit if you're trying to become better at photography. I think it is too. I think it is too. I mean, that's one of the reasons I think that when they teach guitar or piano or whatever, that you do have to learn the scales and you do have to learn, you know, a certain amount of the, of just the nuts and bolts of it before you can head out. Man, this thing is so cool. I'm so envious. And it also slows you down, I think, because, you know, with a 120 roll, you only get, what, 15? 12, yeah. 12 to 50, 12, yeah. So, I mean, again, shows you what I know. I really don't know everything. Um, and I love to learn. Dude, this is so cool, Keith. Congratulations. Yeah, that, exactly. <laughs> I've seriously, I wanted those for the longest time. And he slipped it in under the radar, too. I didn't even know he was going to get this because. I know. Yeah. I would. <laughs> it, was an, it was an online purchase. Dude. Which normally I don't do. Yeah, I, I buy I like some local stuff camera online. stores. We do too. We love we love being local. We love having a community here in Chicago. It's a good thing. It's a good thing.